We surveyed Chicago's principals to find out what does in-person learning look like inside Chicago schools? And their responses exposed serious problematic learning conditions, conditions that were more prevalent in schools that serve black and Hispanic communities. For example, we asked principals, how many of your in-person classrooms are led by a remote teacher? You heard that right. There are students who show up to school in person only to watch a teacher on a screen who's instructing the class from home. In majority white schools, 17% of in-person classrooms have a remote teacher. For majority Hispanic schools, the number's 35%. And nearly half of students in majority black schools show up to school in person only to be subjected to more remote learning because they don't have an in-person teacher. 7% of classrooms in CPS had no teacher at all. 3% in majority white schools, 7% at majority Hispanic schools, and at majority black schools, 11% of classrooms had no teacher at all. No in-person, no remote, no qualified teacher at all. It's basically a bait and switch. Kids were at home getting instruction from a teacher on a screen. And the mayor baited them into school with the promise of in-person learning. But when they got there, they were still and are still getting instruction from a teacher on a screen. I call it bait and switch teaching. And when you think about the fact that the cause is a lack of resources and staff, it's bait and switch teaching amidst resource deprivation. That is what the mayor gave Chicago. And the darker your skin, the more likely you are to be a victim of the bait and switch. Another problematic learning condition is multi-grade classrooms. That's when a teacher, for example, has to teach third and fourth grade or seventh and eighth grade at the same time. This happens in almost 6% of majority white schools, nearly 8% of majority Hispanic schools, and in 10% of majority black schools. Nearly 5% of the district's classrooms are being taught by teachers who had to be switched outside of their grade level or subject area expertise due to staffing shortages. So for example, that means like a fifth grade teacher gets moved to teach first grade or students get taught math by a social studies teacher. And this happens in nearly 5% of majority black schools, almost 8% in majority Hispanic schools, and in 0% of the 19 majority white schools that responded to our survey. 40% of students don't even get recess. In majority white schools, 29% of students get no recess. In majority Hispanic schools, the number's 35%. And in majority black schools, 53% of students don't get recess due to the district's failure to take staffing shortages seriously despite repeated warnings from principals. And then add to these adversities the fact that most teachers, whether they're remote or in person, have to instruct remote and in-person students at the same time. Now, the students who were left out of remote learning were mostly from black and brown communities, and something had to be done to reach them. But principals warned the mayor and CEO repeatedly that students from those same communities would suffer disproportionately if the reopening was poorly planned or inadequately staffed. Principals even proposed an alternative reopening plan to help avoid the racist, inequitable scenario that we find ourselves in today. But they ignored the input of their principals, and now thanks to their arrogance and neglect, thousands of students are being subjected to learning conditions that are inferior to even remote learning. Now, there's certainly teachers who are remote for good reason, but why create a reopening plan that's going to degrade the quality of instruction when you don't have the staff to implement it? Principals told the mayor she was making promises that most schools couldn't deliver on, but she ignored our warnings. So if you have a child who shows up to in-person learning only to have a remote teacher, don't call your principal. Call your mayor. If your child spends the whole day in school with no recess, don't contact your principal. Contact your mayor. And if your kids were in remote learning with kids all in the same grade level, but now they're in in-person learning with kids from two or three different grade levels, don't call your principal, call your mayor. Now, I hope that the mayor and CEO are given a chance to respond to our findings. Let them share their own data about these adverse learning conditions. But the odds are they don't have the data because they didn't bother to ask the question. They got their reopening day photo op, their campaign talking point, and now it's time to divert the public's attention away from these adverse learning conditions that they created in schools across the city. 
Just remember, folks, we reopen schools. Now, move along. Nothing to see here. But we can't move along. The public and the press have to ask specific questions and demand specific answers. Questions like, what percentage of in-person students are learning from a remote teacher? What percentage of students can't have recess because of staffing issues? What is the percentage of classrooms that went unstaffed due to substitute problems? What percentage of classrooms have mixed grade levels? And were there any groups that suffered these adverse learning conditions more than others? And if the district doesn't have answers, then the question becomes, why not? The mayor and CEO shouldn't be allowed to show their faces in public without having to respond to questions like those. What this all comes down to is that Mayor Lightfoot needs to allow the education experts, Chicago's principals, to develop their own reopening plans based on the staffing and resources they have. And to be clear, this doesn't mean giving them the flexibility to implement the mayor's plan in whatever way they can. It means allowing them to scrap the mayor's plan and come together with their colleagues to create plans of their own that work for their schools. And if the conditions I've described here enrage you, don't get mad at your principals. Direct that anger toward the people who ignored principals when we warned them about these staffing shortages and the learning conditions they would create. Communicate that anger to the CEO and the mayor.